Welcome back to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got new upgrades from Zwift, the new Wahoo Kicker, Peter Zagan's new specialized collection, the bike fold, your upgrades, and our main talking point. The 10 most expensive bike accessories that Jeremy is gonna run you through. Let's get started. Before we kick off this week, let's have a look at the poll results from last week in the GCN app, where we asked you, do you think bikes are gonna change much in the next 10 years? And the results, well, 69% of you said that bikes won't change at all. And I have to agree with you. I don't think much more can be done to the bike to make it that much better. Right, let's kick off this week's main talking point. Take it away, Jeremy. Thanks, Manon. Hey, everyone. It's my debut here on The Tech Show, and my first assignment was to come up with some of the most expensive cycling accessories that money can buy. And now, that doesn't mean that any of us here at GCN can buy or would buy or that any of you should buy either, but it's always fun to window shop. So first up, and this is in no particular order, is the small boutique clothing brand from Los Angeles, California, Brandt Sorensen. And they have this wild winter jacket, puff face, wool mask combination that goes for 1900 USD with an additional $500 face covering that's 2400 USD or 1850 Great British pounds. <sighs> Living in New England where we get some pretty wild winter weather. I mean, the thing does look warm, but I'm not completely sure that I'd be able to ride with one of those face mask things on with the glasses fogging, but I'm definitely curious. If you went on their website and you ordered one of their custom $1,500 skin suits, you could have both summer and winter covered for a slick $4,000. Another one we found was Silka's Super Pista Ultimate Hero Edition Floor Pump. The pump is made from stainless steel, aluminum. It has purple heartwood handles, brass construction, and it has a full grain leather piston gasket. Yeah. It also has 1% gauge, which uh, has apparently hyper accuracy, which Silka tells us is for riding the ultimate tune. Now, one of these pumps, $450 or 350 Great British Pounds. Next is Ceramic Speed's OSPW, which stands for Oversized Pulley Wheel System. Now these little devices go on the rear derailleur. You've seen them pop up on Top Riders bikes over the years, only in amazement and curiosities. What is that thing? Because of the way it looks, I have to say I never really paid much attention to it or looked at the price tag, but one of these puppies will run you 1700 USD for the coated model, of course. But Ceramic Speed says that their 3D titanium system will save you watts, it's more efficient, and this coded model that I was talking about for the 1700 has a six year warranty. I can't even get a six year warranty on my car. If you add in one of Ceramic Speed's UFO chain sets, put all a little shipping on there, cost you a nice $2,000 or about 1,500 pounds for that setup. Next up is a pair of Mavic Comet shoes at 775 or 575 pounds is what it's gonna cost you to get a pair of those kicks. Now, our man Simon Richardson has covered these shoes in detail here on the channel with a factory tour, and we've even given away a couple pair of these in some unboxings over the year. But these are probably the most exclusive pair of, I'll say, commercially available shoes on the market. They're super light at just over 400 grams for the pair, and they have a stack height of a mere 4.5 millimeters, which is gonna give you that power going straight into the pedals they're definitely some, some pretty sick shoes. This next one is pretty interesting. I know what you guys are thinking, monkey electric wheel lights. Now, I don't think that we're gonna see any riders busting these out at the Tour de France and zipping up the climbs in the near future, but never say never. I might be able to see a Peter Sagan style getting after it with these, but I digress. Basically, the wheels create a hologram. And once you start moving, there's a dis they display a picture. So you're going, the hologram starts, and it's really whatever your heart desires. You can upload a photo from your iPhone and voila, it will be displayed on the wheel set. Of course, it would help if it's dark out because it's gonna look a little bit better. And I'm, I'm personally thinking, you know, if I got the DC Boys boom box up on top with the turntables down low and I was out there bumping along with the things in the wheels, anyway. I think it'd be pretty cool. These will cost you $1,000 or 575 pounds. Lightweight wheels. You can't do anything about expensive stuff in cycling and forget about Jan riding on these German bad boy wheels back in the tour. Last year, Ineos even busted them out for the big climbing stages. These wheels, though, will run you a cool 
thousand dollars or just over six thousand pounds per pair but they're lightweight i mean i could go on about them but pretty simply they're expensive but the best tour riders in the world have requested them and used them for the last decade plus that all being said it is an expensive amount of money to spend on a wheel set Next up is the Dash Saddle and Seat Pose Combo. The company is out of sunny Colorado and they have a claimed weight of this pair of 65 grams to 135 grams, depending on the length of the saddle post and the padding that you choose that goes in the seat. Now, we'll just split that down the middle and call it, it weighs 100 grams, that's barely a feather. And for a price tag that matches, if you say it was $10 per gram of carbon fiber or something like that, That'd be 100 grams, $1,000. Anyways, I'm always wondering if the future of saddles will be 100% custom, like a plug and play endeavor. Once you're measured up, you basically just, like a new pair of shoes when you go to the mall. Anyways, you just, you know your stuff, you slip it up, they go in the back, 3D print, boom, you're on your way. Yeah. For this setup though, $1,000 or 750 pounds. Now this one has some pretty cool science around it. It's more efficiency, less drag, less maintenance. It's Muck Off's Nano Chain, which will retail for a slick $200 or 150 pound. Now, if you add a bottle of Muck Off's Nano Tube Chain Lube at $75 or 50 pounds per bottle, that's a nice little chunk of cash, but they say that the lube is hyper efficient. It doesn't need to be reapplied for up to 400 miles, and it can be used in all kinds of weather conditions. So maybe that's why Team Ineos busted these out at the tour last year, I don't know. Next up, the THM Fabula 6 rim brakes. 100% carbon fiber. Even the springs are carbon fiber on them, apparently. I've never seen a pair of these. They weigh in at 120 grams for the pair. They'll cost you 1,450 bucks or 1,100 pounds, but they're the lightest brake set in the world and have been for quite some time. They're made in Germany from apparently 100% carbon fiber and they can fit up to 30C tires. But if you weigh over 250 grams or 113 kilos, these are not the brakes for you, unfortunately. They do, though, right now have a coronavirus shipping special. Something to think about. Okay, so last up is the Tax Magnum Treadmill Trainer. Dan Lloyd has seen this one in person. I can't honestly tell you if this thing's being produced today. I have never seen anyone that has one of these. I don't know if it was just made for marketing, but back in the day at Eurobike, Dan was able to see this thing in person and even take a spin on it. But this rig, $10,000 or 7,650 pound. Essentially, it is a treadmill for your bike. It goes uphill, it goes downhill, up to 15% tax claims. And it apparently has sensors in it that automatically sense when your front tire is kind of pushing, like you want to go a little bit faster, so it'll increase or it'll decrease the uh, speed on the machine depending on where your front tire sits. It's uh, got an interactive screen and a host of other features as well. Obviously, it links with Zwift and all of these things, but when it was designed, those things were in their early infancy. So be curious to know where this thing lives now. If you do know, like I said, let us know down in the comments. I'd really like to know if this Tax Magnum exists in real life. So which one of these would you guys pick? We're gonna pick some of our top picks here among the presenters and throw them into a poll in the GCN app. Let us know what you think would be most interesting to you and what you'd be willing to drop a little bit of coin on. Would you go with a pair of Burberry flip flops for 500 bucks or would you do the wolf face mask thing? It's now time for some hot tech and let's start with the Zwift upgrade. Now Zwift have had a solid upgrade. They have some pretty cool features. They have taken steering to all Zwift roads, meaning you can steer your own way around the corners, maneuver your way around the peloton and choose what wheel to sit on. Additionally, the latest upgrade also brings improvements to meetups, including late join and race results. So those of you who are always late never have to miss out. Amongst a whole host of other upgrades, they've also released four bots called Pace Partners that ride almost continuously around Watopia to set the pace. Following on from the exciting new Zwift update, Elite have just released their new Steerzo electronic steering plate. And you might have been wondering, how do you steer around Zwift? Well, this is how. You're going to need one of these underneath your front wheel that allows you to steer. So you need to connect it up to your Zwift account with Bluetooth and then it allows you to take full control of your avatar, steering around Zwift, overtaking other cyclists and positioning yourself out the wind. 
Wahoo have just launched their fifth generation of the Wahoo Kicker. They have added the Kicker Axis Motion Feet that has a five degree lateral movement and just frees the bike up underneath you. So it feels like you're riding outdoors. This is also available to upgrade on the existing Kicker if you have it. It also has a pretty accurate power meter on there too, plus minus 1%. Ollie has recently done an unboxing on this new kicker, so make sure you check that out for more details. Peter Sagan has just launched his latest collaboration with Specialized called Deconstructivism. And wow, I think they look great. The idea behind the color scheme and the design was the smashing of the rainbow. And you know, anything with a bit of glitter, I think looks great. There's a range of different products in this collection, including a range of bikes, helmets, and shoes, including the Tarmac SL7 and Roubaix. I think Peter Sagan has done a great job at designing these bikes. More cool stuff now from specialized ambassador Romance CC. They have once again collaborated with acclaimed artist and street icon Deface to create five custom Evade helmets. These five unique helmets will be sold online with all money raised going to charity. They'll be releasing one helmet every day between the 10th and the 15th of August. So it's still time if you wanna get your hands on one. The latest one went for a thousand pounds. That's it for Hot Tech this week. More Hot Tech next week. It's now time for Screw Riding Upgrades by Upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes or cycling lives for a chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap. <laughs> You guys have been busy sending in your upgrades this week, but before we take a look at this week, let's take a look at last week's results. If you remember, we had Alex's tall bike conversion versus DZ9525's bike that he rescued from being binned. And it was with 79% DZ9525 bike that he rescued from being binned that he turned into a beautiful black and gold fixie. Well done, send us your details on Facebook and we'll send the cab right up to you. Now let's get on to this week's upgrades. First up, we have Gavin Dempsey's, a mid eighties Muddy Fox Courier rebuilt and upgraded to a single speed. Now this one is quite, quite inspirational. I really like this one. So the before picture, this bike is covered in rust. I mean, it doesn't look great. The saddle, not great. Just the whole frame just needs a good old clean down and he said he converted it to a single speed. We've got a triple chain ring on the front there and a very, very rusty chain. And then the transformation is beautiful. Take a look at that. That is gorgeous. Everything's just so clean and nice and fixy. I think a fixy just takes it to another level of cool. In my personal opinion, it just looks great. Done such a good job. Obviously repainted the frame, stuck to the original colors. And the wheels have come up quite nicely as well. I wonder, did you get new stickers from them or were they just cleaned up? I like the disc wheel. This is such a cool bike. Very good upgrade. But who is he up against? Second upgrade this week comes in from Henry KP with a Trek FX 7.2. Now, this doesn't look too bad. This looks savable. And I thought Gavin's chain was rusty, but that chain rust is just taking it to a next level. That's that's probably the rustiest chain I have ever seen. But it's okay, we've got a triple chain ring. Doesn't look in too bad condition, but what upgrades has Henry made to it? Oh, painted it in a lovely pearl blue color, to, converted it into a one by 10 speed with continental cross tires, Montrega carbon saddle and a carbon seat post. You guys do do a good paint job on your bikes and I'm actually doing my own DIY paint job very soon. So if you have any tips or tricks, please leave them in the comment section below for me because I'll be very grateful. But this is a very good upgrade. Looks like the perfect cross bike. Very nice. Two cracking upgrades this week, but it's not down to me. Who's gonna win the GCN cap? Head over to the GCN app and get voting. It's now time for my favorite part of the GCN Tech Show, the Bike Vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes and we vote if they're nice or a super nice. And if they're super nice, the Bike Vault bell gets rung and they get put into the Bike Vault forever and ever and ever. Right, what have we got first up this week? 
This went in from Mark with a specialised S Works Venge. Oh, let's just take a closer look. This background works really well with the mirror chrome finish on the decals on the bike. I'm liking that. Looks like we've got everything lined up. Nice matte black. I do like the decals. They are very nice. We're in Biggie Smalls, cranked, lined up. Also a beautiful background in Singapore. Very jealous of that. Looks beautiful. Don't see any falls in this. Taken the bottles out. No saddlebag. I think this is a big fat, super nice. Next up, we have another Specialized, this time a Specialized Tarmac SL4. And ooh, hmm, not so sure about this one. I mean, the cranks aren't in line. We've still got the saddlebag on, the light on. Could have put a little bit more effort. It's quite a nice background, but it could have been better. Gut Instinct says this one is just a nice, just a nice. Next up, we have this Scott Addict 20RC. Ooh, ooh, I'm liking this one. This looks very stealthy. Is that black or green? I think it's green, it's green. Very nice though. Shram Force on there. Nice, got bottles on there, but they're quite neat. And we've got, instead of a saddlebag, we've got a bottle with puncture accessories in them. Not sure what you call them, but nice. I'm liking this. One of the valves aren't lined up, but gonna let that one go because everything else is spot on. Very nice, clean background. It's super nice for me. Next bike in the bike world this week is in from Nishad. My son's first race bike on a ride in Hong Kong, a 40K father and son adventure. 40K for an eight year old, that's, that's pretty good going. That's more training than I do. But we could all learn something from this, this little dude. He has lined his valves up, he's lined his cranks up, he's taken his bottle off, lined it up with a nice background. Absolutely done to perfection. Well done, and in that case, it's a big fat super nice from me. Last bike in the bike vault this week is in from Gazla Timer. Hand built in France, assembled in Glasgow to take to the Scottish National Hour Record. Wow, give Ollie a run for his money. A track bike, love a track bike. And this is a beautiful track bike. I love the colours on that, the fade into the blue to the red. We've got some nice integrated aero handlebars, Coroma wheels, rotor crank. Very nice, a nice a four spoke on the front. That looks like a very fast machine. I feel the background goes very well with the color scheme on this bike, a nice graffiti background like this. Love a track bike on the bike vault. So if you've got a track bike, make sure to send them in. But I'm, I'm feeling pretty generous this week and this is gonna get another super nice from me. We'll be back with more bike vault next week. That's it for the GCN Tech Show this week. Hope you've enjoyed having myself and Jeremy. We'll be back next week. But in the meantime, if you fancy yourself a nice GCN t-shirt or some nice Castelli kit, head over to the GCN shop.